Hi, I'm Javier. I'm a research scientist at Flower Labs, and this is the very last video in this video tutorial series, where we have been walking you through the process of designing your own federated learning pipeline using Flower for simulations. In the previous video, we show you how you can use the Hydra configuration system to design a very versatile Python application, where you can override most of its components directly from the command line. The content of this video will take what we learned from the previous video and apply it to the entire code base we developed in the first part. We'll see how you can define your strategies directly on the config files and also the models. In this way, your federated learning pipeline will become much more versatile. So the moment you want to try many things with the same code base, mo different models, different strategies, different data sets, everything can be configured directly from the command line, keeping your code clean and maintainable. So let's look into it, how to do it. Okay, so now that we know the basics of Hydra, let's go back to the code we wrote in the previous video and make better use of, of Hydra. If you remember, in the last video, we only used the config and we were accessing every variable independently. What we are going to do now is to replace certain components with instantiate and call statements. So for that, what we're going to do is first uh, replace the strategy with a single, more versatile way of defining strategy, strategies using Hydra. So let's see how we do it. So first things first, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go for our, to our uh, base config file that we wrote last time. And what we're going to do is we, we define some defaults. And one of these defaults is going to be strategy. strategy. And we're going to use, because we use here FedAverage, let's use FedAverage, which is going to be we need to write it, we need to move everything to, needed to parameterize FedAverage into a separate file. And as we know, that file should be in a directory called in a directory called strategy, and inside that directory, in a file called federated fedaverage.jal. So let's go here to conf. Uh, can I create a new folder? Yes. Strategy. And now we are going to create a new config file. It's going to be called uh, fed, fed average dot yaml. All right. Let me just make it like this. And in this file, what we're going to do is we're going to first things first uh, set what is the target. And we know that the target, the way to call a federated average strategy in Flower would be pretty much this line, but not a fell, because remember, a fell is how we are renaming Flower. We need to put the full path, just like this. And what input arguments do we need to specify to this strategy? So essentially, we need we want to because we don't want to change the behavior behavior of our experiment. We just want to change to run the experiment exactly as we defined it last time, but we want to do so through a config. So we are going to take each of these um, input arguments and set them in the config file. So, for example, I will be taking a fraction fit. We'll take in fit clients and here what we are doing if you recall is we are setting this input argument value based on num clients per round fit which is defined here so what i'm going to do is to set a reference just like that then i'm gonna follow a similar process for the for these other arguments fraction fit evaluate which sets how many clients are going to be sampled after the aggregation to, evalu to evalu evaluate the state of the global model. And here, similarly, because we want this parameter to be 
easy to set from this high level uh, component in the in the config file we're gonna do a reference to it min available clients which we know in simulation all clients could be spawned at all times so we are setting this to be num clients and this uh, would be enough to replace all this but what about these functions? As we know from the previous part of the video, uh, we could just we could do something like this. Strategy equals uh, instantiate because this is an object. We could do we'll do something like cfg dot strategy, and then we could put these two remaining arguments here. We could do something like this. Make it a bit cleaner. Instantiate, we just need to, to import this from Hydra Utils import. So this, this would work. But let's go up a step uh, further. Let's say that we also want to specify our, for instance, our onfit config function from the strategy. So remember, on get onfit config is just a function that returns a function. Why do we do it like this? This is because we need to pass a function to the strategy, which the strategy will call uh, at different points in the federated learning process. In particular, this function would be called when preparing a new round. And what it does, it, it, it will create a dictionary in this case, setting what is the learning rate and the momentum and the number of local epochs every client should use for their local training states. But in Flower, we call fit. So going back to the, to the point, this is a function, so we can call the function. We know how to call functions from high level automatically. So we are going to do just that. This input argument is called on fit config function. So we are going to set it like this. And where is this function? This function is defined in server, server, and the name of the function is get on fit config, get on fit config. Just like that. And does it require any argument? Yes. It requires a, a config a config to be passed. And what is this config? This config was our config fit. So we, we can set that easily by setting okay config, which is the name of this argument, has to be my config config fit. And where is that? That's being defined here. So I'm going to create a reference to it. And in this way, uh, I don't need to specify this. Why, why do it like this? For instance, in mind that I want to easily change which, which function creates this function that will be used to configure the config, the config, the config feed stage. Let's say I want to swap this in my experiments. You could have a, you could have something like this, right? And here you can, you could have a, a different function, but that's not, that would take you only, you know, certain degrees. So it will give you only a few degrees of freedom. If you want total freedom, you want to specify this argument from a config file, and that's what we are doing here in, in Hydra. So now we have this defined, and the only missing argument is evaluate function that, that we could follow the same structure but we are not gonna do it and this uh, should just work so let's test it we are not gonna call it. let's do a few rounds 
sorry. Whoops. Okay, that's a mistaken error. Here, here. Missed. It was treated as a string. Right. So now it's just running fine. We are using a Fed average strategy that is getting instantiated based on what is defining this config file. Um, okay. So this is one way of creating your strategy. What if, for example, I want to use a different strategy altogether. We have defined one, but there is no point on having a. Uh, there is no point on using these defaults if you only have one element. You could have just put the strategy, the whole strategy, no config node here. So let's create a new, a new strategy, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to use Fed Adam, for example. You could you could use any other strategy. <coughs> so let's create a new strategy. Let's see. We are going to put it in a strategy. Fed Adam. Yeah. And we know that um, most strategies in Flower have like a. All the strategies in Flower, in fact, have a common set of input arguments. So it is safe to copy paste most of it from fed average with exception of course of replacing this with fed atom <coughs> <coughs> but uh, fed atom has a different set of arguments that are unique to fed opt which is uh, the family of aggregation strategies that fed atom belongs to and this, and how do I know it? How do I know that? Well, you can go to the Flower source, source code and you will be able to, to see it. You can, of course, go to, for example, if you go to server, uh, strategy, in this case, we're going to go to Fed Adam. And in Fed Adam, you will see the typical suspects, right? Faction fig, fraction evaluate, mean fit clients, mean fit evaluate clients and so on but there are a few other arguments like learning rate in the server that of the client tau which helps you control the degree of adaptability of this um, strategy and more critically here initial parameters which is it doesn't have a default value so we need to specify that so let's do that but first let's change some of the arguments. Let's change the learning rate on the server to something uh, a bit higher, 0 0.2. Ideally, you would also be setting the learning rate for the clients through here. But uh, bear in mind that what you would need to do is you, you would need to connect this, uh, this value to that that you are sending to the client, what is something I'm not going to do uh, in this video. And we could send, change also the degree of adaptability, which I'm going to increase it to 0 0.1, for instance. And now what we need to do is to make sure that we, we pass this argument. So how, do we, how can we pass the parameters of the model at, instant, at the time where the strategy is being instantiated? So you could do this, for example, by uh, calling a function. So, so, oh no, sorry, finish. the value of initial parameters is going to be set by whatever a function that I'm going to call uh, model 
to where I'm meet meters, and I'm gonna place this in in models somewhere here at the bottom of model.py I'm gonna place it. So models dot model to parameter. And what is it going to receive? It's going to receive a model. And this model, uh, I will have to define it uh, from the from the config. So let's do that before I forget. So model is going to be pointing to the target, which we know what it is, is model dot net. And it requires an input argument, which is called none classes, which we already defined it here. So I'm going to just take a reference. Uh, Okay, so what is this telling us? What this is telling us is that uh, to this function, a model is going to be passed. But remember, this is part of the strategy. So it's an object that is being instantiated. So unless we set it otherwise, this other target is going to be instantiated as well which means that the model that we're going to pass to this function is not a config node, it's an already initialized model, which uh, I think is what we want. All right, so before we forget, let's go to model and let's write here our utility function. We're going to call it as we specified in the config, models, oh, let's put it model to parameters and it's gonna receive a simple argument our model all right okay so this is some standard PyTorch model in our case so in order to we need to convert it to parameters and parameters is a type in flower so we can make use of a utility function in flower we're gonna import it from flower common dot parameter import things in the array import in the array to parameters and we already know how to construct this in the array right our in the array is something that we did in our client is essentially this is going through the state dict and get every value of this dict so every tensor and convert it into an numpy array so i'm just gonna use that but of course here we don't have self and what i do need to do next is to use this utility function And let me just print something to be sure that we, we did it. And we are going to return this. So this function will be returning the parameters and that will be the value assigned to uh, initial parameters. All right, so let me just review this briefly, but I think we are good to go. So one instant, by default, this instantiates with average and we already run it, we know it works. Let me just remove this. But now we want to add support to a new strategy that needs a fairly different configuration file, as you can see here. It has its own custom input arguments that I wanted to, to change from the default. And more importantly, it has a new compulsory argument, which is the initial parameters of the global model that, you know, we need to pass. Um, yeah, and that, this is how I'm doing it. And the way it will work is that when this 
config is processed, a model will be instantiated for us and it will be passed to this function where the parameters of the model are going to be converted to numpy arrays and then those two of the parameters type in flower and this will be everything we need to go to set up our config using fedadam so let's test it out let's say num round two and now what we want to do is that my strategy is gonna be fedadam whoops whoops Right, it's not models, it's model. So you see my experiment has started. As you can see, we're getting this message, parameters provided by the strategy. Unlike Fed Average that if you don't specify the parameters of your global model, your initial parameters, which could be random or could be loaded from a checkpoint, what Flower does is will sample one client at random and use those clients, the parameters on that client, the parameters in the model of that client as the starting point of the global model. But here, with Fedada, we specify the initial parameters. And as you can see, well, this is Fedada, it has a different behavior, more complicated uh, param parameterization. But we still, after three rounds, we can still see, we can see things getting better. All right, so I think this is everything I wanted to see. Everything I wanted to show you about how to better integrate Hydra into your Flower code. We can go a, a step further and say, okay, this is my model, uh, but what if I want to have multiple models, right? Well, remember, you can do exactly the same. You would do something like model and then, uh, let's say, net. What you would do is have a new directory inside here called model. And you would need to have as default, which is the file I'm, I'm, I'm creating right now. It's called net.jaml which needs to have exactly this content. And then what with that, once we have that content, this can be removed. And if I run the, the code again, it's just working. So it was that easy to take the, the configure node from here out and put it into its own file. And if for instance, now you want to have a new model well, you already know how to do it. You just need to create a new YAML file with everything needed to construct that model and put it into this directory. But now that we have the model, then we can make other simplifications to the code. So for instance, before in this function to create the client, we were passing the number of classes uh, to construct the model. Now and then passing it again to the constructor. And then the constructor will take it and you see here, now we have, previously we have hard coded what model type we were using, which is, you know, it might be okay for the first experiment, but at the moment you want to test this in very different settings, you might want to parameterize this just directly from the config. So let's see how we can change that. So first, what, what I'm going to be doing it here. So I'm going to be passing config um, model, and what I'm going to be doing is to let's see, for example, config dot model. Now this is not this model CFG. Let's call it like that. And now let's, we have arrived here to the initialization of my client. So how do I instantiate this model? Well, you know that Hydra has this utility function called 
instant view from either utils to body. And what you would do is just this. And with this, your client has instantiated whatever model this model uh, variable points to. But we are using the model in other places. Where else? Here. In the evaluate function, we are also passing the number of classes. Which again, which again we were using to instantiate a hard coded model architecture. Let's change that again. And now, yeah, no matter what model you pass, it will be instantiated. So I think I went a bit fast now, and I think, I don't think I made an, an error, but we'll see. We'll find it now. Uh, yeah. yeah, so as you can see, uh, everything is working fine. W now we can, we could define a new model. I'm not doing, I'm not going to do that now, but you could do it and test out if you are understanding exactly how to use Highlander experiments. One other benefit of using Hydra throughout is that, as you can see, some we can reduce the number of imports we do in our uh, Python files. Uh, for example, this get on fit config. Well, that's that was defined in YAML, right? So we don't need to import it anymore. Similarly, in my client code, well, what's the type of model I'm setting? Well, that's defined in the config, so I don't need to import my my model and if we go to the server well similarly right i don't need to import my my model because that's being deal with when instantiating objects either at the very beginning or later when when you specify to do so so this is everything i wanted to show you i think uh, you can see that the code looks a bit cleaner it's more versatile you can see that changing from one, one um, strategy that is not only changing the class we are pointing to, right? It's changing also, oh, now I need a completely different set of input arguments. All these in particular. Well, you can do it directly from the command line, right? By setting Fedora. If no, if you want to still use Fedora, well, that's my default, so I don't need to specify it. One final thing before we conclude the video is is the following. So you know you know how to run different experiments like this with a command line, but in some settings you just want to run a batch of experiments where you test out all combinations of different strategies, di different config files or different values of your conf elements in your configs. So how can you do that with Hydra? So to do that you will use Hydra uh, multi run flag. And what you would do is specify the parameters you want to uh, iterate over. For example, let's go to our base config. I want to test experiments when my batch size is value 10 and 32, for instance. And I also want to specify, I want to run the experiments when my strategy is uh, fed average and fed Adam. For example, so what this is going to happen is it Hydra is gonna unroll all these settings and see, oh, the user wants to run, in this case, four configurations, right? Bat size 10 with fed average and fed Adam, then bat size 32 with fed average and fed Adam. And all these results as you know, all the results usually for Hydra go to this directory called outputs. And inside every directory, you have the results. You have the results you might save. In our case, we are saving it as a pickle at the end of the file, but you also get the logs 
and you also get the config files that were used to execute your code. Now, if we run the multi-run, uh, the way the results are structured is a bit different, but I'm going to show it to you as follows. So if you, if you scroll first to the top of the file of the log, you'll see Hydra launching four jobs, right? Because as we saw, there are four jobs that we want to run. And here it's telling you exactly what configuration is being executed. And it will execute them one after the other. And in this case, instead of creating a directory in outputs, it's creating a multi-run directory, which has a similar structure. So in this case, the date and time, and then the config of the, of the multi-run, and also one directory per uh, config evaluated. So in this case, we will create four directories with names 0, 1, 2, and 3. So yes, I'm going to let this run for a few minutes, but this is everything I wanted to show you. As you can see, we made a huge improvement compared to the code in the previous video, where uh, different elements were hard-coded, like we have hard-coded what model to use, what strategy to use, and the only changes we could do were like high-level arguments. Now we have to take this a step, big step further, and we can change directly the strategy without changing anything in the code by specifying which file to to use. And we have now just just now seen how to you can use the multi-run feature, so you can iterate over multiple different settings with almost no effort. So this is the end of the video, but not only that, it's also the end of this video tutorial series. I hope by now you feel more confident on how to design your very own federated learning pipelines using Flower. If you were not familiar with federated learning at the beginning, I hope that by now you understand what are the key components in federated learning and you know how they interact with each other. Components like the client, the strategy, the server. If you were already familiar with federated learning, and this maybe was your first experience with Flower, I hope it was highly positive. Maybe you were even already familiar with both federated learning and Flower. If that's the case, maybe the second part of this video tutorial series, where we show you how to use Hydra, uh, is valuable so you can take your experiments uh, to the next level. No matter what's your situation, in these three cases, you are, of course, very welcome to join our Flower Slack, which I'm linking here with this nice QR code. We are a very vibrant community of more than 2,000 researchers, students, engineers, people from academia and industry. So you are very welcome to join there and to raise uh, concerns. Maybe you have questions. Maybe you would like to see some improvements. You can ask us there. If you have some concrete improvements you would like to let us know, maybe GitHub is the ideal place for that. I want to also use this opportunity that if you have enjoyed this, the content in this video tutorial series, maybe giving us a start on, Git, on GitHub is a, a nice token of appreciation that we really value. Also, if you are part of other social media platforms like uh, LinkedIn or Twitter, we're increasing our activity there. So make sure you follow us there. So this is the end of the video and um, maybe you want to look into other videos we have in this YouTube channel, like videos from the Flower Summit or other tutorials. See you in the next one.